out here at the WVU Coliseum. Big hand, 20.17 rebounds his last outing against the Pitt Panthers. West Virginia coming off that victory, getting ready to take on the Northern Colorado Bears. See Robbie Inzbukowski getting ready to talk with head coach Bob Huggins prior to this game as the Mountaineers looking to avoid an upset bid for, bid for Northern Colorado. Let's go over to Robbie now. Robbie? Yeah, I got, uh, Bob, coming off a 15-point win Friday over Pitt, what do you expect to see from your club to build off that this evening? Well, hopefully we come out and play hard like we played against Pitt. And we want to continue to get better defensively, continue to rebound it. We're going to go a little smaller today. Uh, and see if we can't get a little better ball movement. Thank you, Bob. Yep. Right. Robin Warren. Robbie, thanks very much. And that going a little bit smaller today is a new starter in the starting lineup, and that is Taz Sherman starting in the place of Derek Culver. We've talked about Matthews and Shibwe, Haley and McCabe in the backcourt along with Sherman. Jeff Linder's done an outstanding job. His fourth season as the head coach of the Northern Colorado Bears won a CIT championship a couple of years ago and has really done a wonderful job with the program. He's also made a slight change to his starting lineup. Roderick McCobb in instead of normal starter Sam Mastin today. So each team giving a slightly different look. Northern Colorado, we expect to sh uh, see them shoot a lot of threes as Kor Jokic and Oscar Shibwe go for the tap and it is controlled by Jokic and the Northern Colorado Bears, and this is Jonah Radabaugh playing the point. He is their do-everything player. Excellent defensive player, all-around player. And as always, West Virginia starting out with that sticky man-to-man. -man. And they create the turnover. Sherman thought about it. Now they'll pull it back out. Sherman starting tonight in the place of Culver. It was a coach's decision, so uh, we'll see how long Bob Evans decides to, if Culver's going to play or not this evening. Cape trying to get the traffic moving here with 12 on the shot clock. Trying to set it up for Shibwe. Gets it to him out on the blocks. Shibwe, jump hook off glass. Good. Shibwe made a living against Pitt down low and looked for him to do the same thing this evening. Yeah, it's hard to see anybody in this Northern Colorado roster that's going to be able to handle the size and strength of Shibwe inside. You mentioned Roderick McCobb starting for Northern Colorado. They went a little bigger to try to match some of West Virginia's size. Jokic looking to be bailed out. Here's Hume, their top outside threat. Three-pointer off the mark, and Jokic called for a foul inside. Hume is a guy to keep an eye on the sophomore from Sterling, Colorado. As we take a look at Bakes, take the keys to the game. Throw it close. I don't think they can stop West Virginia inside. Guard the arc. As Rob, you mentioned, they shoot a lot of threes. Attack the opposite glass. Absorb WVU runs. West Virginia is going to have some runs on Northern Colorado. They need to do it. They also need to drive and pitch that ball outside to the guys that are, you know, that are shooters out there. So look for those things to happen. But uh, West Virginia, again, should have a field day inside. Well, that's one thing Jeff Linder says his team is lacking that he really wants to have, and that is a, a five, a center man who can stretch the other uh, team's defense, move those big guys away from the basket and be able to shoot from outside. Doesn't really have that with his team. Here's Matthews now with five on the shot clock to Haley, and we have a foul called, I believe, unless that was out of bounds. I believe it was a foul called, and it was on Haley. Haley. Well, that was a bad possession for West Virginia. Really West had Virginia nothing going. Emmett Matthews tried to create something, and I think that Haley tried to you know, get some space inside. There is Derek Culver again. His status for the ball game is, is unknown, other than to Bob Huggins. Radabaugh turns the corner on Haley, and there's the drive and the pitch, and there's the hit. There's That's the what they want to do. Exactly right. And Everybody they will fill it up Johnson. from three. Matt Johnson knocks it down. And boy, keep an eye on Jonah Radabaugh tonight, number 12. He does everything. Two-time Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Set the school record for rebounds in a single season. Can score a little, can pass. Just a really fine, tough all-around player. And a little shuffle the feet by Sheepway. Second turnover for West Virginia. That drive down the middle or by Radabaugh really set that thing up. And then he kicks. And these guys know when he penetrates, if he can't get all the way to the, the basket, they are ready to shoot the ball. Radabaugh looked right at home against Texas. Just oh, now, as I say that, he turns one over. Sherman looked like he ran into his own man there. He'll hit, and now Radabaugh looks to move. 
And they're going to get the charge on Radaboff. Third turnover for West Virginia as McCabe does a nice job drawing defensive position. Yeah, Jeff Linder didn't like the call. Well, I'll tell you what, McCabe right he had pretty good position, but Radaboff tried to step around, and he did not get the call. In the old days, they used to tell you to pull up at the free throw line to shoot a jumper there. Yeah, well, that's what Jeremy tried to do. Now, as you say, I think he was <laughs> obstructed by his own man last time down. Gabe gets the high screen. Now Matthews will try from three, and Emmett Matthews strokes it home. Boy, has he felt comfortable this year shooting the three ball. Seven for 12 from three-point range. That is comfortable. Comfortable and confident. Nearly 60% from beyond the arc. Here's Hume, three-pointer. Challenged late by Matthews. May have affected the shot. Hume 0 for 2 from beyond the arc. He's their leading scorer. Uh, he can really fill it up from outside. So just because he missed a couple, don't sleep on it. Now Haley will try from outside. And Jermaine Haley will hit. Jermaine Haley. Doesn't shoot that many of them, but he usually makes the ones that the shoot count. Well, he's one for one. <laughs> that was his first attempt of the season. He's able to hit it. Here's Mastin who's checked into the game. Hume trying to go to work. And really got himself caught. Able to get it back to Mastin. Ten in the shot clock. Mastin dumps it down for Jokuc. Jokuc misses the short one. And Sherman comes away with it for West Virginia. And Shibwe on the move. And Radabaugh stepped in front, and that's going to be two personal fouls on Jonah Radabaugh, and that could be a big issue for Jeff Linder and the Northern Colorado Bears. Couple of three-pointers. Matthews hits one for the Mountaineers. Haley has another, and West Virginia up 8-3, 15-50 remaining in the first half. Mountaineers off to a fast start. Four minutes, ten seconds in. They lead by five. I'm Robbie. It's Mikowski. Well, you see the defense of the Mountaineers so far continuing what they started on Friday. Just three points for Northern Colorado in the first four-plus minutes of this game. And that started with the game against Pitt on Friday. In the second half, the Pitt Panthers shot just 12 percent. They went three for 25 in the second half. And the first thing Bob Huggins did was credit Ron Everhart, who was the assistant coach that scouted that game. He said he, quote, did a great job. I asked Ron Everhart about that. He said it was a way we adjusted at our perimeter defense. That's what's led to it. Here's where it gets interesting, Robin Warren. The film study for Everhart and his staff said they saw the pick guards penetrated well. They said, hey, why don't we try something different? Now, Bob Huggins, one thing Ron Everhart said, Huggins is really good at letting assistant coaches do their jobs. He listens to them and their suggestions and implementing new ideas. If they think it's going to work, safe to say that one worked when you look at the defense they had to the start of this game and also Pitt in the second half of the last one. Robbie, thank you. Inbounds to Shibwe and oh, nice look. Oh, Shibwe lost the handle awesome. going up for the dunk. Haley got it back. Skips out. Sherman three-pointer and it is good. Three for three for West Virginia from three-point range. Well, past Sherman, the thing that you have to like about the Mountaineers, when they get these open threes, they are ready to shoot when the ball gets there. And there's Kai Edwards, who's checked into the game, lost a handle, jump ball. It'll be West Virginia possession. Jump ball, possession arrow for the Mountaineers. A good kick out pass. Haley always surveying the court. And again, Sherman ready to pull the trigger when he got it. Well, they have a number of players who look really comfortable shooting the three. We haven't even seen Sean McNeil yet, but West Virginia already three for three from three point range. Here's Haley down the lane, and he is. Bumped and fouled. Going to be called on Matt Johnson. Bears bomb. You wonder how Northern, Northern Colorado are handling uh, handle it right now. Jonah Radaball on the bench, and he is their undisputed leader with those two fouls. Will Coach Linder leave him over there for quite some time, or will he feel like he has to get him back in? Well, Radaball, I mean, think about these averages 12 points, seven and a half rebounds, five assists. Two steals as McCabe gets the roll, an 11 0 West Virginia run. That is hard when somebody's producing the way Radabaugh is across the board. It, that's a lot to try to pick up for that's the other exactly players. Exactly right. Well, West Virginia very aggressive with the man to man. 
Kick to the corner. Maston three-pointer. And it is too strong. Rebound to Haley. Logan Rout has checked into the game. And we see who tumbled to the floor back up, setting the screen now for McCabe. McCabe pulls up. Shot is good Jordan for Jordan McCabe. McCabe. And everything at the offense again going right for the Mountaineers. A 13-0 run for West Virginia. He said they've got to absorb some runs. They've got to stop this one immediately. Well, they were down 16 to Northern Iowa on, um, on Saturday and fought back and then went down nine a couple of times and fought back. So they're going to, but they're going to have to do it again this evening. And boy, McKay really under control, knocking that shot down. Scoring drought of four minutes for Northern Colorado. Inbounded to Johnson. They've got to find a way. When they get open threes, they cannot miss. That's really the big issue they had to Texas is route blocks Johnson. Followed up. No good. Kept alive by Hume. Hume goes to the left hand. Boy, Bodie Hume is a nice looking player. Averaging 17 a game. Stops that run. Down to route. Route. Jump hook. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound to Edwards. And Maston. We'll find Johnson trailing, and Johnson hits the three-pointer. Three. Three Five three quick points for the Northern Colorado Bears. When you shoot threes like they can shoot threes, no lead is safe for the team that's, that's winning. Here's Sherman. He'll try a three and hit. Oh, man. West Virginia lights out from beyond the arc. Four for four. Aston turns the corner, and now he'll draw the foul on Jordan McCabe. And Ronnie Everhart yelling just what I was thinking just now. He's a lefty. Get on that left side. Make him go back the other way. So Ronnie Hart, Everhart yelling. He's a lefty. He's a lefty. And there is Ron Everhart. And just finishing up Robbie's story, obviously, was the head coach just up the road at Duquesne. Has, you know, plenty of head coaching experience on his excellent resume. And not only nice that Bob Huggins listens to Ron Everhart, but nice that Bob Huggins has an assistant like Ron yes. Everhart and the others on his staff that have been together now for eight years. One of the longest tenured staffs at the Division One level. Masson trying to give Northern Colorado a, sp a spark. Hurt earlier in the year, but uh, comes off that bench and brings a lot of energy. Didn't start tonight, uh, but uh, brings a lot of energy when he comes in. Has suffered a concussion and missed the win over Colorado College. Was able to return, though. A 2-2 two two Northern Bears team. And again, the losses at Texas on the road in a game in which would have been really interesting if they'd hit some wide open threes. And talking to Jeff Linder about that game said maybe they needed to go through a game like that because eventually they hope to get out of the tournament. But even teams like West Virginia, at least they'll have seen that size, that, you know, that type of size and athleticism previously. Here's a beautiful back Backdoor, back nice job. Excellent pass by Emmett Matthews. When we saw the instant offense out of McNeil at Pitt the other night. He's a quick two as he's just checked in along with Miles McBride, who did a nice job defensively. And now look at that pretty backdoor feed. Boy, I'll tell you what, Trent Harris got caught peeping at Emmett Matthews and lost track of McNeil. Here's Treshawn Smoots handling the ball, checking in for the first time for Northern Colorado. Maston dribbles himself into trouble. Another hell ball, and it will be Northern Colorado basketball as Chase Harler gets set to check in for the Mountaineers for Haley. And McNeil did it the right thing, got on the left side and forced Maston to go right. And that's what uh, Ronnie Everhart was yelling about. Brandon Knapper into the game as well for West Virginia. You know, some sort of debate here among the officials. I don't know they're discussing whether Napper was allowed to come into the game because of a late substitution or what the cause of the discussion may have been, but discussion's over. 
It was a shot clock question. And here's Johnson. I'm told Johnson. Ooh, wow. That was deep. And Matt Johnson is third three pointer. They have a lot of guys that have confidence behind the arc. I beg your pardon. I believe that was Trent Harris that hit the three pointer. Harris, yeah. So it was Harris stepping in off the bench and hitting his first three. He's a 44% shooter from three point range. And I'm sure the coaching staff for West Virginia knows this. Trent Harris, of his field goal attempts last year, 80% were from three point range. So you probably know where he's going to pull it from. He doesn't know how to shoot a layup. <laughs> With a lead now seven, so Northern Colorado's battled back a little bit after that early deficit. Haley tries to go to work, does, misses the layup, and now yeah. they're going to get Sheetway over, the, over the back foul call. So Northern Colorado hanging around. As you mentioned, this is going to be one of the keys for them to fight off the West Virginia runs. And how about the deep three from Trent Harris? The lead for West Virginia is seven. Eleven fifty-eight remaining first half. West Virginia leads Northern Colorado twenty to thirteen. How about West Virginia four for four from beyond the arc? Yeah, the threes are going down for the Mountaineers. Uh, Emmett Matthews, who's improved his three-point shooting, see Jermaine Haley and Taz Sherman has gotten into the act with his start tonight, and he has knocked down two. So West Virginia really deadly from three. And again, Taz Sherman starting tonight in place of Gary Culver. It was a coach's decision, uh, and that's about all we know, David. But uh, Bob Huggins is the man in charge, and he says, well, we'll see whether or not we see Culver, and it'll be Bob's decision. Take a look at Emmett Matthews and Jordan McCabe. Logan Rout, Bob Huggins talking to them, and Derek Culver, who is still in his warm-up gear. The lead has been trimmed to seven. North Carolina started one for four, three for their last five since. Staying within shouting distance of the Mountaineers. Harris thought about it. Smoots comes off the dribble. Smoots high off class, altered by Shibwe and rebounded by McBride. McBride pulls up and McBride hits. Man, West Virginia, nine for 13 from the field in this game. Boy, it didn't take McBride long. Got in the game, was instant offense. And here's Haley stepping in front of the pass to Hume. And the finish for Haley. Boy, just a lazy pass. Haley read it like a defensive back picking off a pass and, and uh, stepped right in. Smoots back to Hume. Hume three-pointer, and it is too strong. So Hume, their leading scorer, has yet to hit from beyond the arc. Here's McBride. He'll try a three. First time West Virginia's missed, but Haley with the rebound and fall. He sailed in. Wow. Well, as of right now, there is no let up in the Mountaineers after that pit win the other night. Doubled up the Bears 26-13 early. And gentlemen, Red Ball is coming back in the ball game for Northern. And Jeff Linder says, I have to have him back. Here's Harris board. off the mark. And out of bounds, it'll be Northern Colorado ball. And Haley, the nice finish on our slam cam. And then back on the other side. How about this rebound? Yep, he sailed in. West Virginia since that last time out a 6-0 run. Haley never looked like anything really rattles him. This one's picked off by Radaball. Radaball has Harris trailing and off the mark. Rebound to Haley. Into the corner. Napper three-pointer on the way. Too strong. Shibwe is fouled by Jokic on the ground. So not a shooting foul. And again, 
more than Colorado cannot afford to let the Mountaineer bigs get that low and that close to the basket. They're just not strong enough to do it. Yeah, easier said than done. I mean. Easier said than done. Yeah, you try going out there moving him. <laughs> Shibwe has been very impressive early on for the Mountaineers. McDonald's High School American, just the second recruit, McDonald's High School American recruit in West Virginia history. Oh boy. And Haley has it batted away, but gets it back. And the reset with 12 on the shot clock. Napper weaving in. Haley didn't like to look. Now Haley will have to fade away a partial block okay. on that ball. Good defensive set that time for Northern Colorado. Radabaugh gets it and flipped over to the corner. Here's Harris and too strong again on the three-pointer. So Harris hit the long three to begin with and really a sharpshooter, 44% from three-point range, but he's missed his last couple. Well, he He's, he's missed a couple here lately, and, and Brody Hume has really struggled early. I'll tell you what, he's one of the guys that I thought you have to make him put the ball on the floor. Don't let him set shoot, but we've seen him with a couple of open shots, and he hasn't been able to knock those down. It's hard at all. Beautiful feed for McBride. Let him right to his right. Yes. Is able to spin off that pass and convert. That's what they used to teach you big guys, right? That we take the pass, the pass will lead you to where to go, lead right? To where to go. The passer should tell you where the defense is. Harris, extra pass, corner, Johnson, and it's off the mark again. And Northern Colorado has gone cold, an 8-0 West Virginia run. Here's Harler in the middle, has it deflected, and Edwards comes away with a rebound. And they're going to call Harler for the reach-in. Yep. A little frustration on Chase's part after not being able to get that shot to go down. West Virginia and we see Mastin checking in for Harris now and Northern Colorado almost four minutes again another long drought for them checking in is a guy that Jeff Linder says look you know for college basketball fans take that name Bodie Hume and just kind of keep it in the back of your mind because he's a guy that could potentially have some NBA interest here's the backdoor cut and she got a hand on it and it will be Northern Colorado basketball. Yeah, Edwards telegraphed that pass. Sheboy got a hand on it, just couldn't corral it. Checking into the Mountaineers. Now route in for Sheboy. Inbounds pass. Radabaugh short. Well, Rebound to Napper. Break for West Virginia. Somebody fell asleep. Radabaugh should never be able to get a shot like that. Edwards and going to get called with a hold on Logan route. Give West Virginia people uh, credit, well, not only the bigs, but we saw Edwards. just a second ago that the uh, passes are going inside at the right time to the big guys and um, getting and leading them into good shots. Chase Harlow was able to make a shot just a second ago. Must be some blood on, uh, yep, on his elbow. Is. So route is going to come out of the game, have things cleaned up a little bit. And he was Oscar shooting. So they're going to bring Sheboy back over. Yeah, I think uh, Route was supposed to be shooting the, the, the free throws. So. You now they're going to, you know, they tried to say, okay, Sheboy's got to come out. Uh, we're going to put Sherman in there to shoot. And then uh, Fisher said, no, he's already reported, so uh, he can't shoot. So. They tried to sneak Sherman into the game because an injured player, he could get him to the line. And Shibuya dashed off and checked in for Rowdy, be the normal substitution. So it is Rout who will shoot the free throws. One for two on the season, by the way, for Logan Rout. Rout says, I'll show you. I'm going to knock both of these down. Yeah, I think, you know, the preference might have been Sherman, who's hit both of his free throws and has a great scoring pedigree. But it will be Rout. They're going to clean up some of the blood. Well, McNeil was on the court. He's not a bad free throw shooter either. No, but I think it's when a player's injured and he goes out, it's the player who's replacing him, and uh, Sherman getting a kind of a chuckle over on the bench. Now Edwards will go out of the game. It looks like Edwards might be a little bit bloody. 
Somebody's got some meat hooks that need trimmed out on yeah, the court. Yeah, how about that? Get some fingernail clippers and clean some things up here at halftime. <laughs> yeah, you do wonder. And now both teams kind of trying to utilize this as a sort of quasi timeout, and the officials aren't having it. They're calling both teams back to the free throw line, and finally after a Rather lengthy delay, Logan Rout will come to the free throw line to shoot a one and one following the seventh personal foul by Northern Colorado. Too strong. Logan Rout spent a lot of time today in shoot around and uh, in practice the other day at the foul line, but still is going to need some more work. Northern Colorado trying to snap an 8-0 West Virginia run. Mastin shot off the mark. Rebound to Napper. Napper looks to push. And he is fouled. Looks like Mastin on the reach-in. Personal foul. So Brandon Napper will have a chance to shoot a pair of free throws when we resume. West Virginia has gone on another long scoring run and leads Northern Colorado 28-13. Bob Huggins and the West Virginia Mountaineers return to AT&T Sportsnet on Sunday, December 1st at 2 p.m. when they take on the Rhode Island Rams out of the Atlantic 10 Conference in a key non-conference matchup. It's all a part of wild and wonderful sports and it gets underway Sunday at 2 on AT&T Sportsnet. Well, you know, Rob, one of our keys was to for Northern Colorado to absorb runs. I, you know, they did against uh, Northern Iowa the other day. They were down 16, came back, got down by nine, and came back a couple of times and came back to take the game into overtime. I don't know that they can do that, afford to do that against West Virginia too many times. No, I think if you're Jeff Linder right now, you're wondering, what can we cut it to in the next 744 to kind of make it manageable and, and give yourself a chance? Do you need to get down to 12 or 14? Yeah, somewhere in there. You'd like to have it right around 10 or below, but that, you know, that's going to take some work. At the line for the Mountaineers, Brandon Napper shooting two. Napper hits the first. That is Napper's first free throw attempt of the season. And he hits his first two. McCabe in for Napa. 30 to 13 for West Virginia. Well, West Virginia can run so many different guys at you. Yeah. As you're sitting down trying to scout this ball club, and who do you talk about? You just never know who it might be from night to night. You know, you and I were talking about that, and you would think that if you were a West Virginia player, you would have to take every practice absolutely seriously you know there's no there's no room for slacking off because there are guys that want to take your place and want to take your exactly. minutes as we see another three off the mark well West Virginia doing a good job of boxing out I mean not to say that teams don't practice hard but I, I would think there would be a sense of urgency knowing that you know the team can probably win without you they've got 12 good ones and you want to be as Mike Tom would say, you, want to, you don't want to be on a moving train, you want to be on the train when it leaves the station. <laughs> Three second violation against the Mountaineers. Yeah, Logan got caught in the lane. Yeah, if you stand and don't move, then they're going to call it. But you can be in that lane, your foot can be in the lane for five, ten seconds, and if you're moving, they won't call it. Well, there's Derek Culver on the bench, and again, uh, no word on just coach's decision, but you know, we talk about the. You want to be out there when the team's playing well. I mean, you'd think Culver would be one of their, their their guys they couldn't do without, and here they are up 17 early on. Radabaugh, and he is fouled, and will have a chance to shoot three. Well, Logan Rout, uh, was, I was talking to him before the ball game, and he was complaining about having uh, the last home game being called for a foul on a three-pointer. I don't think there was much question about this one. That Logan Rout thought he got all ball. It's a 10 0 run. Radabaugh is looking to end. 77% free throw shooter. And hits the first. So he does end that run. 
you know, just talked a lot about him. He's a quarterback and a safety in high school. So, you know, you, if you saw the Texas game, totally fearless. No fear at all. Took it right at the Longhorns. Uh, probably had, not probably, had the, the best game of any of the Northern Colorado players and, you know, showed up big on the leadership role and the comeback against Northern Iowa. You know, a word I used with him when I saw the games that he's played, he's pesty. You know what I mean? He's, he's a lot like Javon Carter defensively, not quite as good, obviously, as Javon. But he'll sneak up, he'll down, tap the ball away, does so many things. You don't become defensive player of the year in your conference two years in a row without uh, without having some skills like that. How about doing it as a walk-on? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He was a walk-on. And then the next year, you know, set a single-season school record at six foot three for rebounds at the Division One level. So uh, Radabaugh again, he's one of those guys I think pretty much any coach in the country would love to have on his team. Yes. Route misses coming up short, and the rebound pulled out of there by Trent Harris. Good help by Logan Route on that drive by Radabaugh. Hume just couldn't find any room there. Good defense by Matthews. Radabaugh turns the corner and tried to skip it out for the three, batted away. Back come the Mountaineers. Matthews for McCabe. Now McCabe will pull it out. Under six minutes remaining, first half. Mountaineers up by 14. Sherman thought about it. Now 10 on the shot clock and has it deflected and a turnover. Yeah, that was a predetermined pass by Sherman just now. Fifth West Virginia turnover. Treshawn Smoots turns the corner. Oh, nice little dribbling exhibition. Yeah, He's, he slid to a knee. Sweet Georgia Brown not playing when he did that. Oh, nice pass inside. Yes. Boy, he drew That's route to him and then dumped that thing off to Edwards nice. And Bob Huggins upset. Giving Jordan McCabe a little bit here. I think it was a little bit too much dribbling for him. And Edwards, Edwards with on the, the receiving end. Yeah, that's a pretty play as Smoots got Logan Route to commit, and that's that timing you need as a point guard. You're on the receiving end of a few of those a big of those. jams back in the day, huh? Hell yeah. All right. Let's take a look at West Virginia's upcoming schedule. And again, uh, Bob Huggins talking to his team, uh, Boston University, who I believe you had your career high against, did you not? Scoring back in your uh, Hall yeah, of Fame days. Somebody told me that. Northern Iowa, yeah. the, again, a, a team it always has to be reckoned with. And then it's either South Carolina or Wichita State as uh, the, the game against Northern Iowa and the one against either South Carolina or Wichita State will take place in Cancun, Mexico. And then that Rhode Island game, I'm really looking forward to that one too. on December 1st. Always one of the powers in the Atlantic 10. Bob Huggins, words to share with his team. I'm trying to get a meta, a gentleman that uh, is the all-time leading scorer at Rhode Island, and we became good friends at the Final Four, and I've invited him in. He's going to try to get here. Carlton Silk Owens, the all-time leading scorer at Rhode Island. Hopefully he can make the game in uh, when West Virginia plays Rhode Island. Boy, and what a talk about a great nickname, <laughs> Silk. <laughs> Silk. And I've seen I've seen his clips. He was so, silky smooth. Three, smooth. Second, team yeah, there's Jeff Linder looking on his team is not deep. He only plays nine Jermaine players. Jermaine so you see West Virginia there. They're going to run a lot of guys out there. Jeff Linder wants to keep it to about nine. So you know not only the exhaustion of playing against a bigger, stronger team that will throw a press at you, but also some foul troubles that he's trying to juggle around as well. There's. A look at the four on the bench that you would expect to see among the five, uh, along with the five playing for Northern Colorado and Jeff Linder. And here's Haley. And the second one is short Sheepway with the rebound. Sheepway, the move inside and the conversion for Oscar Sheepway. Boy, a good base inside. Only Sheepway's fourth point. But I'll tell you what, nice offensive rebound. Didn't go over the back. And then, you know, you get bumped in there. You have a tendency to walk sometimes. Not with that big frame he has. Five rebounds for Sheepway as well, which I think that uh, Bob Huggins will be looking at that first and foremost. Here's Hume. And finally, Bodie Hume 
hits one and watch out now he's a guy that can get it going he hit the big three in that comeback you were alluding to against Northern Iowa that you mentioned Hume hit the three pointer that sent the game into overtime in the waning seconds yeah and had a good look at a three uh, at the end of the first overtime it didn't go down and they ended up getting beat but this is batted away now Edwards able to come up with it and McCabe doing a nice job and ooh, blocked on the other oh, end by Hume we told you Hume kind of sneaky athletic yes, able to is. get up and uh, kind of out of nowhere bat that away from Matthews Emmett Matthews did not see that coming Here's Radabaugh right down the middle. Jonah Radabaugh. And the lead down to 10. Again, very good. These guys, they don't quit. And with that three as part of their arsenal, they can come back really quick. McCabe, Sheebway on the block. Quick turn, lost the handle back to McCabe. Extra pass to McNeil. But a three-second uh, yep. violation on West Virginia. So their sixth turnover. And Sheboy doing some excellent work for the Mountaineers down low, using his superior size and strength on the other end. Northern Colorado gets the first three of the game from Bodie Hume, and they have cut the lead to 10. At the WVU Coliseum, West Virginia leading Northern Colorado 33-23. How about the all-around game bake of Jermaine Halen? Yeah, you know, so cool and calm. You see him knock a three down, then uses that defensive presence that he has. And then you see him coming in and getting an offensive rebound, doing a little bit of everything for the Mountaineers. And the guy never seems like he gets, you know, ruffled at all. So. Well, he's a calming influence on the on the on the court for the Mountaineers. Eight points, four rebounds, an assist, a pair of steals, and Jermaine Haley doing good work in his 12 minutes and seven seconds of playing time thus far. You'll take that sort of production all day across the board from Jermaine Haley. Jermaine's one of those guys too that, that just kind of quietly does his thing. You know, it, yeah, it's all it's all spectacular and all, but it's one of those things where it just kind of happens, and before you know it, you see some. Boy, did he have that many points? Did he have that many rebounds? You know, you wonder. This is a guy whose dad played in the NFL and the CFL. His grandfather set the high jump record. Yeah, hey, maybe the expectation is, hey, you're just going to go out and do well. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. it. You're just going to sure. okay. I'll just go out and do well. No, no big deal. Radaba, oh, very difficult shot. Wow. And tied up by Edwards along with McBride. It'll be Washington into basketball on the help ball. Radaba thought he was fouled taking it to the basket. And Bob Huggins said it was an over the back. Yeah, that was an over the back at Kevin. Let's see if either one of them had a case. Uh, I didn't see much of a foul there, but wow. Edwards had a lot of ball, but it was around the neck. Uh huh. Uh, it's neck area, but the uh, official call the jump ball. I think both coaches can live with it. Yeah. They used to say in basketball, the hand is part of the ball. I don't think that was ever really rude. I don't know if the neck has ever been <laughs> part of the ball. Hume. Mm. Well, that was kind of an, a little off kilter on yeah. the delivery. Hume he went flowed, one way to the pass. Yeah, the pass went the other, kind of. We talked about that earlier, how uh, as we get the foul on Sheepway inside. Yep. Now the pass can lead him. That pass to Hume didn't really lead him where he wanted to go. It looked, and now Sheepway picks up the personal foul. Take a look at it here. Yeah, Sheepway's moving and obstructing. That, 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 that was an easy call for the officials. Yeah, sure was. Radabaugh going to work, kicks it out. Three pointer on the way. Too strong. It was Smoots with a three pointer. Northern Colorado, boy, they've had a couple of chances now down the floor to cut into this 10-point yes, lead. Now West Virginia will look to extend it. We head down the stretch here in the first half. Oshibwe begging for the ball. Got Edwards on him. Good job by Edwards to push him away from the basket just far enough. And then a good box out. Three-pointer off the mark. Harris. Fired it up again. A pretty good look. Rushed it just a little. And Jeff Linder had a great comment when we talked to him earlier this week. You know, we're asking him, hey, is this the kind of team you want? The team he took over a Northern Colorado team that was down a scholarship because of NCAA violations. We mentioned they won the CIT. He said, look, uh, when we're recruiting, we're not going to be able to get the big guys. We're not going to be able to get the athletes. He's going to 
very tough pull up. So we're not going to beat him in the air. We have to be able to beat him on the ground, on the, ground. On the floor. So he wants guys that can shoot. We mentioned just looking for a, another couple big guys that can shoot. Here's Smoots. Oh, beautiful lead to Edwards. So that's a couple times that Smoots has found Edwards. Yep. And Edwards has been able to jam it home to lead back to 10. Boy, the dribbler getting beat and causing a mismatch inside. Oh, Matthews, yeah. silky smooth. There's your silk right gotta, there. Got to have better on the ball defense if you're West Virginia at this point. Brandon Napper checks in for the mountain here. Boy, if Matthews can consistently hit that shot, oh the three-pointer he hit. And to make him devastating with his ability to take the ball to the basket as Jeff Linder wants to call a timeout. 12 point lead there is Emmett Matthews Jr. Now Jeff Linder's probably seconds. saying timeout. it was 35-25 you know, and we had four or five chances down the court and couldn't cash in on any. It very easily could be a, a six point ball game right now. And then West Virginia comes down and gets that, uh, that shot just now that goes down and uh, knocks it back up to 12. Well, that was a tremendous shot by McBride, too. It was a, it was a good, tough one-on-one -on -one shot. 37-25 the score. Mountaineers up 12. Here's Oscar Sheepway, the second McDonald's All-American to enroll at WVU as a freshman. Had to go back to the 80s for the first time that happened. And the first player ever to get a double-double in the McDonald's All High School All-American yeah. game. 12 points and 10 rebounds. And really a hard-working young man. He understands. He went to Kennedy Christian. They played at the smallest level and then uh, went up to the highest level in Pennsylvania for his senior year. But he understands he hasn't played against a lot of guys like him. Knows that he needs work. So uh, a hard worker who knows what he doesn't know, which is sometimes an important way to learn. And Hume's going to be called for the push-off as once again an oh open three missed. Emmett Matthews is down. Grabbing a knee. Uh-oh. That is not oh, good for oh, West Virginia. Uh, Nor for Emmett Matthews. Doc Matter waiting for the official to beckon him on the court. Didn't see exactly what happened here. Let's see if we can. Yep. He got a shove in the back from Brody Hume. And. May have just landed awkwardly on that uh, on that knee. Let's see here, get a better shot here. Oof, right. Oh, boy, I tell you, looked like McBride collided a little bit with right there. Oh yeah, look, like, like a hyperextension yes. maybe. I mean that, and, and the fact that he's up and walking around is at least encouraging. Exactly. And the fact that he's staying in the game is even more right. encouraging. Yeah, it looked like it might have been hyperextended when McBride hit that, hit that knee. No, well, he's going to stay in the game. The so. Shooting a pair. We'll go to the free throw line here. Is it both of his free throw attempts this season? Well, all the Mountaineer fans able to exhale after they see him now going to the free throw line. And too strong. Matthews originally a Connecticut recruit guy who really uh, obviously went to after the, the firing there was able to change his commitment go to West Virginia and really came on towards the end of last year one of several young Mountaineers who had promising finishes to last season's disappointing season Matthews hits the second and now he'll come out he'll come out yeah I was going to watch and see how he did at the defensive end but Chase Harlow and smart by Bob Huggins. Chase Harley will come in and uh, yeah, that, Matthew go, go down to talk to uh, Doc Metter a little bit. He is walking gingerly, to say the least. So under a minute remaining, first half, West Virginia up 38 to 25. Smoots, Edwards, again, third time Smoots has blown past his defender and found Edwards on the switch. Here's Logan Rout, and Rout beats Edwards back down the floor. Nice job, nice find by McBride. 
for West Virginia is on the ball. Defense has been awfully shaky here. We've seen Edwards become the recipient of a lot of easy baskets based on Logan Rout having to go over and help out on the drive. Jayshon Smoots, a freshman who Jeff Linder is high on. You can see why. Here's Hume now. And Hume will have to pull a long wow. and he hits it. Oh, Cody Hume wow, from Hume. way downtown. Well, with Haley in his face. Man has cut this to 10. So Northern Colorado, we told you they could shoot. How about this to finish the first half as we go over now to Robbie and Spikowski and Bob Huggins. Yeah, Bob, great start defensively. Obviously didn't finish that way. How do you assess the way your defense played in the first half? Played well for about 10 minutes and very poorly for about 10 minutes. What can be done to improve on that in half number two? It'd be nice to stay in front of them. Thank that you. Help. Yep. Thank you, Bob. Robin Warren. Robbie, thanks very much about how we saw it as well. As Smoot's able to get some penetration, Northern Colorado able to get some late threes and some jams off that penetration. And the lead is at 10, 40 to 30 halftime show. Coming up next here for the WB Coliseum on AT&T Sportsnet. Emmett Matthews out for the second half here, able to jog out. You've seen him shoot a couple three-pointers from outside. We'll see whether he's going to be able to go for the Mountaineers after being banged up a little bit towards the end of the first half. How about the three-point shooting for Northern Colorado? Well, you know, we said that they like to shoot him, and they hit enough just to keep this ball game close. This one, Bodie Hume hits right at the end of the half. I'll tell you what, that was a huge shot to get this lead back to 10. Taz Sherman in that surprise start in place of Gary Culver came out and couldn't disappoint. Hit a couple of big threes early on to uh, propel the Mountaineers. So, yeah, he's uh, he's shown that you know, put me in that starting lineup and I can handle it. And Mr. Reliable and Jermaine Haley doing what he does, always does it cool and calm as well. So, uh, he rebounds, he steals, he shoots the ball outside and is always there just to be a calming effect. Eight points, five rebounds. You can see West Virginia doubling up Northern Colorado in the rebound margin, 22 to 11. So that's a good sign for West Virginia. For Northern Colorado, maybe it's a good sign that they're five of nine from three-point range. You probably need to shoot better than that, but only down 10 here. Only down 10. And the points in the paint, they had 10, but a lot of those came late as West Virginia could not shut off the drive and drop off. And we'll see if Bodie Hume can pick things up. Leading scorer with a 17 and a half point average. Hit that three pointer right at the end of the first half. You've got to make him put it on the deck. Now Hume it steps out, misses the three. He did miss that one. Haley with the rebound. You don't want him to be able to get those feet set and go up and shoot it. Make him earn his shot. And Matthews is out there. He has the ball now. So that is very good for West Virginia. That turnover is not. And wow. Smoots, who was really a spark plug for Jeff Linder, stays in the game. And now Smoots calling for them to reverse the ball. Good double team. Make Hume give it up. And a little bit of trouble. Radabaugh able to track it down. 12 on the shot clock. Here's Rodabaugh back to Hume. And Hume thought about it. And now jams it home. So he did put it on the deck. He gets the pick and then gets the... You know, Haley closed out, but by then he was long gone. Yeah, Haley closed out, expecting him to shoot that, and Hume gave him a little head fake and was able to get all the way to the rack. No help defense by West Virginia. It's an eight-point lead, 40 to 32. See a sloppy turnover by the Mountaineers, and then Hume on a... But there's Mr. Reliable and Mr. Steady. Yeah. Haley answers on the other end, gets around Hume, lays it up and in. Back to a 10-point lead. Smoots looking for a screen now switches to Hume Hume drops the three-point attempt instead down to Edwards so looked like he was going to fire the three but a really good find with Edwards wide open underneath yeah and Sheepway asleep at the wheel Edwards snuck behind him Sheepway's looking at Hume outside 
Oh. And a dump down to Matthews and swatted away by Radabaugh as we go over to Robbie and Spikowski. Robbie. Well, guys, I can oh, confirm uh, with Emmett Matthews Jr. back on the floor that it was indeed a slight injury after consulting with head athletic trainer Randy Metter. It is a slight knee hyperextension that he suffered late in that first half. Luckily, that's all it was, Robin Warren. Yeah, Robbie, thanks very much. It's what it looked like, Warren, but I mean, you know, you obviously never know as Logan Rout loses the ball and a ninth West Virginia turnover. Boy, and that intensity that Bob Huggins wants to see, you don't see right here at the beginning of this second half. Sloppy basketball, both ends for West Virginia. Smoots has really been the engineer, but now he turns it over to Sherman. And he wasn't the engineer of that Sherman tank. Wow. Roaring down with a jam. Boy, did he elevate on that dunk. And they've got the WVU Coliseum up and cheering. It's been rather silent for a while. Radabaugh in trouble. Corner. Johnson thought about it. Drives in. Out to Radabaugh. Three-pointer on the way. Off the mark. Rebound to McKay. Well, a good set by Northern Colorado. They just couldn't finish the shot. Crowd wanting to cheer. Here's McCabe. Almost lost it. Route able to control. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Haley, tough drive, hangs and draws the foul call on Hume. Well, Sherman read the pass, came down, and he certainly wasn't going to miss that. Boy, did he elevate and just throw that down. Had to get his head out of the way yeah. so the ball wouldn't hit him on the way through. Did you elevate like that back in the day? Uh, no, no, I didn't. We, we couldn't dunk, so it wouldn't have done Were you in good. the no-dunk era? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a shame. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, my, my, my last game ever, I did dunk one. Did dunk, you get a technical? technical? Yeah. You did? I didn't care. <laughs> I dunked it and just ran off the court because I knew the coach was going to take me out. Okay. I didn't care. Fair enough. Rather a silly rule that the NCAA had for a while for Kareem, those that don't remember. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rule. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it was at UCLA. As Haley gets the generous roll yeah, on that boy, one. He had every piece of the orange on the rim to get that to go down. So in the heyday of the John Wooden UCLA team, uh, afraid that... Luau Cinders, he was known then, would uh, dominate too much, and uh, so they took away the ability to dunk. Uh, did not stop Kareem from winning some national championships at <laughs> UCLA, did it? Number 12, Cash Sherman, call for the personal, his first Sherman called for the personal foul. Leads at 11. Well, the guards from more than Colorado really pound the ball on the deck a lot. And I think that's by design because they want to see if they can beat their man and set up one of those long-range shooters. The smooch retreats. 12 on the shot clock. And looking as he cut his dribble, Hume gets it guarded by Matthews. Hume spins. Oh, nice help by Rout. Hume got it back and then is going to draw the foul call. Boy, Bodie Hume has come out very, very aggressive. We know that he can shoot that long range shot, but he's really been aggressive going to the hole. Change there. And then the yeah, four Mountaineers around Hume. He's still able to get it. Drew the foul on Haley. Came in an 85% free throw shooter. Last year, the Big Sky Freshman of the Year. And misses the first free throw. By the way, also set the school record again, Division One. So it only been Division One since 2006, uh, but still, records are records, and he holds the school record for most blocks in a game. Blocked six shots against Wyoming last year. But don't let that fail, uh, fail frame fool you, because he can shoot it, shoot it with the best, and he's much stronger than he looks. Yep, stronger, and uh, as we've seen some athleticism as well. Mentioned Jeff Linder has uh, talked about him as a guy NBA scouts or at least keeping an eye on. Dumped down to Matthews. Now inside the route. West Virginia has been trying to pound that ball down low all evening. And a good find by Matthews. Excellent find by Matthews. Good positioning by Ralph. 
That about turns the corner, and there's Edwards. Boy, he has just been collecting the passes and wide open all game long. And Bob Huggins is not happy. That time we had a good double team out front, West Virginia did, and no rotation back to Edwards. Edwards five for five from the floor, all either dunks or layups. Meanwhile, Taz Sherman elevating. Mountaineers remain up by 10. 18T Sportsnet. The Penguins playing without Sidney Crosby for at least six weeks undergoing wow. that surgery, uh, the abdominal surgery. So, a uh, team turning in a fine performance. Last time out, hopefully, they can keep things rolling. Mike Sullivan's done a tremendous job with that team. It started in the offseason with Jim Brotherford really improving the team's depth. Congratulations to him on being a Hall of Famer, too. You and Jim Rutherford, right? Hall of Famers. And, and there's Evan Matthews and Derek, Derek, Derek Culver. Yeah, Derek Culver gets to see some action. Culver sighting. I think West Virginia has such an advantage inside down low that he feels that Culver could give him exactly what he needs inside. And there it is to Culver inside. Lost the handle. Got it back. Spins. Lowers the head. Can't get it to go. Haley with a follow. Well, you would think that and just pounding the offensive glass at the superior size would work yes. all night long. Well, what happens when that ball goes in the cover like that? Everybody, because you're going to have to get help, collapses down. And that made it easy for Haley to get that offensive rebound. 13 points, six rebounds for Jermaine Haley. Out of bounds, it'll be West Virginia. No, it's going to be off West Virginia. It will be... Northern Colorado basketball when we resume with the Mountaineers up 49 to 37. Looking for another victory in this young season taking on Northern Colorado. The Bears have hung around in this game. Taz Sherman and company up 12 for the Mountaineers and Jermaine Haley has been the lead story, I think, for West Virginia here in this 12-point lead so far. Yes, he has. When West Virginia's needed him most, he stepped up. You know, something that you would expect to be in West Virginia's favor, bench points. West Virginia has 14 points off the bench tonight, 20 points off the bench for Northern Colorado. It's the way West Virginia runs guys in and out, and see a lot of those points have come guys coming off the bench hitting threes. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Harris is not unexpected. He averages 11 and a half a game. Maston, we expected to start, but uh, he was replaced in the starting lineup by Roderick McCobb, who we haven't really seen since. And uh, Kai Edwards has been uh, on the receiving end of some easy baskets, five for five, either dunks or layups yeah, for him. Yeah. And all of them uncontested because right. the big for West Virginia had to step out and help because the guard or whomever had been, been beaten down the middle. There we saw Maston on the bench. As Radabaugh in trouble, and now uh, we'll throw it off a Mountaineer, but then it goes off himself for the eighth Northern Colorado turnover. Well, it was a good idea by Radabaugh. He really had no place to go. He was trapped in the corner, and a lot of times you'll see a guy bounce the ball off and, and get it back, but that one hit him as it went out of bounds. West Virginia basketball. Haley dumps down to Culver. Culver spins left hand high off glass. Pretty move by Derek Culver. Throw it low. They have plenty of chances. They can't stop West Virginia inside. But Culver looking like he wants to make up for lost time. That about turns the corner, swatted by Culver. Back out, three-pointer on the way, too strong. Nice box out from yes, Matthews it was. And Sherman tried to get it to Derek Culver running the floor, and Derek Culver has come out with a purpose. Yes, he has. Well, for whatever reason, he didn't start. So, Coach, I'm going to prove to you that I need to be in the ball game. And Edwards does a nice job creating a 10th West Virginia turnover. Radabaugh delivers. Edwards spins out. Extra pass. Corner. Harris. Three-pointer. Short. Rebound to Culver. Northern Colorado had a mismatch and did not see it. McCabe was on Edwards inside, but they did not recognize it. 
Now, West Virginia has to be careful. You want to get that ball in there, but the pass, first of all, you can't telegraph everything. And secondly, sometimes you have to make an extra pass because Culver or whomever the big guy is may have better position from a different angle. Smoots and Jokic checking in for Northern Colorado. Sherman pulls up off the mark, and Culver and Jokic battling for it, and it will be a foul on Jokic. Core Jokic picks up the person. And here's Sherman's shot coming at you, and the tangle up. And now we have an offensive foul call. Yep, a little, yep. little clear-out by Sherman on the baseline. Bob Buckins had kind of a grin on his face, but he really didn't argue the call. Well, <laughs> he's getting his chance now, he's stalking up the court. There's Smoot, who's really been a spark plug off the bench. Smoot finds Hume, almost picked off Hume. Has it blocked partially? Nice defense by Taz Sherman. Out of bounds, it will be Northern Colorado basketball. Really good defensive play by Taz Sherman. Smooth really trying to create something with his dribbling and penetration. West Virginia had a much better job that time down defensively. Inbounds to Jokic. Jokic put the ball on the floor. That's really not his game, but fouled by Culver. But Jokic was bailed out by that foul. He had just kicked the basketball. Bob Huggins doesn't like that call at all. Here's a look at it. Ooh. Wasn't, that, wasn't, wasn't a lot there. Smooch thought about it. Will kick. Radabaugh, extra pass. Back to Radabaugh now. Nine on the shot clock. He'll take it in, kick it out. Lined up three-pointer is well off the mark and rebounded. And now a foul called as Radabaugh somehow got in there. It was Smooch who fired from three-point range. Barry Culver with another foul. The line for the Bears. You mentioned Radabaugh sort of a nose for the basketball type of player. Somehow comes away with that ball. Uh, Derry Culver may be trying to make up for, as you said, lost time now. Being aggressive, you want him to be aggressive, but you want him to be aggressive under control. And he will come out. Sheetway will come in, along with Deuce McBride. Radabaugh unhappy with himself as we uh, see Culver head over to the bench and Bob Huggins. Little chit chat for him. Radabaugh unhappy that he missed the first free throw is able to get the second one down. And so again, a, a 13 point lead. It, it feels like a larger lead yes, than it does. this, doesn't it? I think Colorado has not been able to do much, but Mountaineers unable to add to their lead, and that pass well off the mark from his right to Harris, who is called with a travel. There was the same, another situation with that turnover. Sheepway predetermined what he was going to do before he did. I'm sorry, Rob. I was going to say, they just said uh, Radabaugh having a word with Harris and trying to calm him down maybe a little bit. There's Sheepway. Quick trip onto the floor for him and right back out for Culver. Eighteen on the shot clock. Down to Culver. Jokic gets him a little away from the basket. That's what he needs to try to do. Oh, good strength. Couldn't finish. Haley missed. And now the rebound. Boy, Culver kept it alive. Man, he is just really possessed got, inside. He looks like a bull in a china <laughs> shot, doesn't he? He's playing aggressive basketball right now. Calling for the ball. Spinning left hand, and he is fouled by Jokic. Ah, Jokic did everything he wanted to do. He pushed Culver away from the basket. You don't want him to get that low, but you can't foul him. Can't foul him if you make him take a tough shot like that. It's interesting, Culver last year actually played better as the season wore on and as he got into Big 12 play. He averaged 
almost a double double yep. in Big 12 play, which is something. Well, he did in Big 12 play, but 11 and a half and 9.9 .9 for the season. This year down to 10.6 and a half rebounds. I know it's only a couple of games, but maybe trying to find a way to get he and Shibway going together at the same time. Well, you, yeah, you, then it'll be interesting to see when they, again, they are both on the floor together. Derek uh, Culver. Now, last year, I think Culver felt like he was the man inside, as he was, as Logan Rout came in and spotted him some. But with Chibwe coming in, that's going to take some of that glitter and gloss away from Culver. Well, they're both so talented. If they can find a way, as we see Edwards come in for Joe Kajir, Shibwe, if they can find a way to get them both on the floor at the same time being productive, wow. Well, we've seen Culver really make some nice passes from the free throw line down low to Sheepway, that high low action, and I expect you'll be seeing quite a bit of that from the Mountaineers. Sheepway, a little like, and it's hard not to compare him to Sags Kanate since they went to the same high school, um, but looks to me like, you know, maybe eventually he's going to be a guy that can shoot a little from the perimeter as well, and maybe the high low goes both ways as we take a look at Spooks, and he is. Going to draw the foul, a chance to shoot a pair of free throws when we resume. The Mountaineers have extended the lead to 14, 52 to 38, with 11.45 remaining in the second half. At the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia leading Northern Colorado 52 to 38. Here is the preseason Big 12 poll. And Kansas, uh, ninth time they've been picked to win it. Eight first place votes overall. Baylor, Texas Tech, uh, making things interesting. Texas, Shaka Smart has another talented team as he's uh, kind of revamped things, has turned over the defense to one of his assistants. So uh, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on them. Saw them playing uh, this Northern Colorado team earlier. And there's West Virginia picked right in the middle of things. And you just have to wonder, signing a young man like Oscar Sheepway, whether that influenced any of the the, the, the poll uh, voters or whatever, you know, to have him come in and uh, wait a minute, West Virginia with him, we can't have them eighth or ninth in this league this year. I think maybe. Well, Shibwe and then Culver picked to right. on the preseason first team All Big 12 team. So. Smooth to the free throw line, and it is short. And then, you know, you begin to add in the pieces, and, it, and it's hard. It, teams, you know, people around the country don't see the teams as much as we do, but, you know, if you're paying attention to the end of last year, McCabe, Matthews, Haley, the way those guys finish things off, and then you bring in a couple of outside shooters like Sherman and McNeil, and suddenly it looks a lot more interesting. Right, exactly. There's Taz Sherman. And Deuce McBride, the promising freshman. As Culver gets it out to Napper. Good find. Napper off the mark. Edwards the rebound. Boy, not a force by Culver. Good job, Napper. Just couldn't knock the shot down. Smoots, five assists, has really been a spark plug for the Bears off the bench. They keep dribbling around till they can try to find a mismatch someplace. Smooch trying to find Hume. Hume, five on the shot clock. Well, fire wow. up three. Wow, Bodie Hume. And, you know, the tougher the shot, the better his shooting yeah. percentage in this game. He's missed some open threes and hit the contested ones. We saw him hit one there with Haley in his face the same way at the end of the first half. Lead is at 10. Boy, everybody from the Mountaineers seeming to want to post up here. Culver spins middle, left hand, no good. Batted around, out of bounds. It will be West Virginia basketball. With shot clock running down, it's at three. He just jumps up. And Matthews kind of looks around and says, what else could I do? We have to reset the shot clock here. West Virginia. Has not hit a field goal for over four minutes. Napper gets the teardrop to go. Not an easy shot, but he converts 54 42. The Mountaineers' lead is back to 12. Well, really impressed. Northern Colorado is doing a great job of keeping 
our big, uh, West Virginia's bigs off of the uh, the basket, pushing them away. Uh, Harris with an open three, missed it, and now Radovall tries to bang it off one of the players. Battled for uh -huh. on the floor. Haley will find Napper, and the crowd here at the Coliseum likes it. Oh, what a scrum. Napper lining up for three and short. Rebound to Edwards. Sometimes you can be too open. And Napper had plenty of time to think about that. Smoots will draw another foul. Foul is called on Derek you know, Northern Colorado's had some good looks and just six for 24. It really reminiscent of the Texas game where they had some open looks early. Uh, yes, they lost by 20, but boy, you hit three or four more of those threes, it could change the complexion change, of this game. Exactly right. They've had some looks and uh, still find themselves down just 12 in the game. Checking in for the Mountaineers, Oscar Shibway. So Harris out, Culver out. And. Shibway in for the Mountaineers. Napper checks out as well. So it's Deuce McBride, Taz Sherman, Jermaine Haley, Oscar Shibway, and Emmett Matthews as Smoots gets ready for a one and one. And he hits. West Virginia putting Northern Colorado on the line. You pick up points, the clock's not moving. And I think West Virginia's on the ball defense has gotten a little better but still usually teams that pass the ball you see a lot of one-on-one -on -one dribbling by this northern colorado team and west Virginia, i don't think it's used to having to stay on the man quite that much smooch is going to be called for the personal foul trying to chase deuce mcbride through traffic Third on Smoot's fifth team foul on Northern Colorado. So a couple more before West Virginia will get in the one and one. Shibway trying to find position. Nothing that Deuce McBride likes, so he'll settle things down. Now 10 on the shot clock. Edwards did a nice job of running. McBride, three pointer, no good. Shibway. And the battle, and Shibway amidst a sea of blue, able to come away with a rebound and draw the foul call. Ball is rolling. Boy, big Third battle Bird inside. <laughs> He's just surrounded. <laughs> that a ball got down in the middle. But the big guys, then he took an elbow to the nose, too. Northern Colorado is going to call a timeout. So I, I thought the same as you. Maybe their officials were going to take a look at it. But in fact, Northern Colorado has called a timeout. So 9.09 remaining as the Bears use the timeout. Bob Huggins wants a word with one of the officials. And the lead right now is at 10 for West Virginia. So again, Northern Colorado, one of those teams. You look at the Texas score big and you think, well, um, how good is this Northern Colorado team? Well, they're picked to finish fourth in their conference by the media, fifth by the coaches. The Big Sky um, can turn out some good basketball sure. teams. Boise State's been pretty good. By the way, Jeff Linder was in charge of the offense at Boise, yeah, Boise State, State right. before moving on to Northern Colorado. So um, Northern Colorado's been pesky in this game, hanging around. They have, and, and West Virginia's kind of tightened up shooting the basketball. They're doing a good job of facing, uh, you know, making Culver come away from the basket or whoever the big is in there. And uh, if they get a couple more threes down, you know, this thing is 10 points is certainly very obtainable for them. Yeah, West Virginia just has not found the rhythm offensively, it feels like, yeah. in this game. And I'm sure Jeff Linder's saying the same thing. Look, your 6 for 25 was the number we mentioned a moment ago. Boy, what if you're 9 for 25? What if, what if you're shooting about the way you normally do? Throw 9 points on that 44, and we got a 1-point game. Of course, it hasn't happened, so uh, continue to draw plays and and try to keep his team in the game against this West Virginia team. Again, maybe still trying to, to find the right combinations of players. Exactly. Well, the West Virginia offense of the has really sort of struggled here of late. Matthews. And Edwards again with another good box out. Kai Edwards and Treshawn Smoots have really done a fine job for Jeff Linder. 
Ride a ball head up the entire time he drives, but always with his head up trying to see if somebody can shake loose for the three. Ooh, beautiful reverse by Radabaugh. Boy, you know, he's done that so often and then looked and found the open three-point shooter. That time he shot it himself and the lead is right. down to eight. Shibwe lobs it down to Matthews. Matthews kicks it out to Haley. Around the horn, back to Sherman. Shibwe, jump hook, way too strong. Haley, the offensive rebound. Let's remember that shot clock only resets to 20. And Bride pulls up. His shot's off the mark. Battle inside. And it is tracked down by McCobb. So Rod McCobb able to get that for Northern Colorado. The lead is eight. And Northern Colorado's half-court defense, very good. Smoots. Smoots just dribbles around trouble. until he tries to find a mismatch someplace. Off the screen. We'll find Johnson. Three-pointer. And it's good for Johnson. Matt Johnson steps out. I make it better. Yeah, it is Matt Johnson who hits the three-pointer. Lead is down to five, Warren. Wow. West Virginia in dire need of a basket. Shibwe tries to dump it down for Haley. Haley controls, goes up, lost it, batted over volleyball style. It's Edwards who finds it. 13th West Virginia turnover. Oscar Shibwe has to be careful. Every pass he throws from the free throw line, everybody in the building knows where he wants to go with it. Radabaugh looking into the corner. Three-pointer on the way. It is good. Uh, Treshawn Smoots with confidence, and it is a two-point West Virginia lead. Well, Bob Huggins discusses it, takes a seat on the bench off of his stool. Well, you talked about it, the ability to get right back in it with this Northern Colorado three-point barrage. Here's Matthews. He'll try. Matthews off the mark. Haley kept it alive. Edwards, and Edwards is fouled, so... Northern Colorado on a 14-2 run. We'll have the basketball a chance to tie or with a three take the lead. When we resume, Northern Colorado has cut it to two, 54 to 52. Last time out, Northern Colorado down 16 forced overtime against Northern Iowa. Big, they were down 17 in this game to West Virginia. They clawed back to within two. Yes, they have been. But well, I tell you what, those threes started dropping for them, and they have the confidence to hit them. That's what they do. They shoot the three. They, they're under the thoughts, we're not going to miss them all night. Well, they uh, are starting to hit them now with more regularity. Eight of 27, still under 30%. But, boy, look what they've done in the second half. That pace has improved. A 14-2 run. And Kai Edwards, a chance to shoot a one-and-one. One. First half, it was West Virginia's interior defense that was lacking so much. As we saw the bigs, Edwards in particular, do so much damage with the bigs from West Virginia helping out on the drive. And now that three ball is beginning to work. Edwards was two for ten from the free throw line coming into this game. He hits them both, and we are tied. Approaching the six-minute mark, down 17. Northern Colorado has knotted it. Down to Culver, and Culver able to trickle it over the rim over Edwards. Chase Harler inserted because he does a good job of making that pass from the free throw line down low. Radabaugh turns the corner and loses the ball out of bounds. Good job by Chase Harler. Edwards, had, up to that point, had done a pretty good job of forcing Culver and Sheboy out a little further, not that time. McBride finds Harler on the wing. 
think they'll probably try to get that ball again. Culver trying to roll, but now that's exactly where they want him out. Nice job. One thing that Gary Culver does is pass the basketball really well. Nice cut by Haley. Lead back up to four for the Mountaineers. Radabaugh wants a screen. Gets it from Edwards. And cuts his dribble in trouble. And a six turnover for Radabaugh. Boy, and Chase Harder has done a great job coming off the bench. That time, he was the one that actually created that turnover. Haley realizing that the lane was open. Culver with a good lead pass. Haley, 15 points, 11 rebounds in this game. Derek Culver will go to the free throw line. He has five points in his seven minutes of play. Make it six. Came in perfect from the free throw line, 10 for 10 on the season. Missed the first of the night, and now is hit his next two. So he's 12 for 13 on the season, and West Virginia has quickly rebounded from the tie score, and they're up six. And a five-second call on Hume. And that surprised Northern Colorado, that full court pressure just now. Big turnover. Jeff Linder thought that was a quick yes, he five did. seconds. Yes, he did. Batted away. Culver tried to keep it alive, but Smoots scoots out of there with the ball for Northern Colorado following the 14th West Virginia turnover. Well, I tell you what, it's been a long time since I've seen a team telegraph as many passes as West Virginia has done. Radabaugh, open three, two strong, rebound to Haley, his 12th. Well, Radabaugh would like to have that one back. Excellent look. Ooh, Taz Sherman and Culver was looking away, and just found it in time to prevent another turnover. Haley drives in, Haley finishes. Well, when you need it, Mr. Cool. Well, he does have that languid look of yes, a guy. Yes, he does. Just, yep. just not too tough. If you need me, I'm there. 8-0 run for the Mountaineers, responding to this 16-2 run put on by Northern Colorado. Hume didn't like the look. In desperate need of a basket. Hume drives, gets inside, missed the shot, Culver the rebound. Excellent defense by Harler again. Mountaineers trying to add to this 8-0 run. Harler down to Culver. Culver, and they're going to call Radabaugh for the foul. Radabaugh thought he had tied Culver up. Instead, it's a personal foul as Culver has come on and made his presence felt. The Mountaineers responding to the big run with an 8-0 run of their own. Jermaine Haley having a big night for the Mountaineers. It has been an interesting game with the WVU Coliseum. The Mountaineers up for the really the entirety of this game. Up as many as 17 at one point. A furious Northern Colorado rally tied the game and then an 8-0 run since then as Kai Edwards has led the way with 12 points and 9 rebounds. Excellent game for the senior off the bench and Jermaine Haley 17 points and 12 rebounds for West Virginia in this one. Well and Haley seems to show up when they really really need him as well. You know I said that about the Emmett Matthews that that's what he did at Pitt but tonight Matthews it's been a little quiet, kind of slowed by that little inner injury, but Haley has stepped up. The thing that you have to really be impressed with Col uh, Northern Colorado, Trayshawn Smoot, six assists. He's been driving that ball around and finding open people all evening. Culver will go to the free throw line. Did not start seven points in nine minutes. Has three rebounds to go along with that. Didn't see any action until... The second half, the lead up to nine now, eight points for Culver. Logan Rout and Sean McNeil, part of a 
very deep bench for the Mountaineers. Route. Seeing some of the time that undoubtedly would have gone to Culver, although it was Taz Sherman who started coach's decision by Bob Huggins. Boy, Culver has really, really improved that free throw shooting. Madabaugh turns the corner and is pushed as he came in, and Culver's grasping his forearm. It looks like he might have. I don't know if he hit himself on the backboard. Not an issue most of us have uh, a problem with. Yeah, even Matthews did get him with the body. Well, the guards from Northern Colorado really adapt to getting to the basket. Man. And Radabaugh stops the 10 0 West Virginia run. Here, West Virginia, you cannot relax. Not the way this crowd can shoot the three ball. Jeff Linder looking on. It was top player Jordan Davis playing professionally in Spain. There's Hume with this sneaky follow-up. So he's looking for more from players like Bodie Hume, who has increased his scoring average from 10.8 to 17.5, and the lead back down to seven. Matthews slips it into Culver, and Culver, strong move. Matthews kept it alive, and now the rebound, jump ball. It'll be West Virginia basketball as Culver reaches in there and pulls it away from Kai Edwards. Yeah, with the strength of Culver, Gout, and certainly Sheebway, you're going to see more and more teams try to do what Northern Colorado is doing, force them, the bigs, at least one to one and a half steps further out than they want to be and going to the basket. Culver goes to the right hand, and he is left-handed, rebound by Matthews. Culver wants it back again. Going to work and slapped away by Radabaugh. Here comes Harris on the move. 15th West Virginia turnover. Big Radabaugh. possession. Oh, yes. Radabaugh directing traffic. Had a ball to fade away off the mark, gets it back. Hume had an opportunity to step into a three, instead takes it inside and scores. Lead down to five. And that second shot. Boy, Bob Huggins' film session tomorrow, just the second half alone, is going to be something that the players probably won't want to see for the most part. Over to Haley now on the wing. Eight in the shot clock. Down to Culver. Calling for the basketball. Spinning to the middle. Left hand in. Good. Oh, just so strong inside. Didn't take that extra dribble. Picked it up. Felt the double team coming. Actually, triple team. Picked it up and was able to get the baby hook to go down. Ten points. I'm bigger part ten minutes, 11 points for Derek Culver. Steps out on Radabaugh now. Radabaugh in trouble. And he wants a timeout. Jeff Linder gets a call. Northern Colorado down seven, 122 left. And boy, Derek Culver just, he has made his presence felt. Well, watch him. He'll read the double team coming. Sees it coming. Yeah. The last time down, he left it on the floor. That extra dribble had it knocked away. That time, one dribble, step, and shoot. Well, he has such a great blend of quickness and strength. strength. Yes, he does. Uh, it's just a tough combination. And he, uh, again, coach's decision did not start. And don't know much more about it than that, other than he did not only not start, but did not play until about the 11 minute mark. Yeah, or so so somewhat deep here in the second yeah. half. He has played 11 points. He has played 11 minutes, has 11 points and four rebounds. So this is the Derek Culver that watching Indy fans saw last year really become a force in Big 12 conference play. Bob Huggins looking on as his team is up seven. That about looking gets it into Smoots. Hugh. Off the mark with a three-pointer on the set inbound play. Yeah, it was a set. And Hume with a pretty good look. Oh, 
Kings can be patient. Run that shot clock all the way down. Shot clock at 10. Kobe will kick it back out to Haley. Haley, corner, McBride, three, too strong. A lot of contact inside, and I believe they're going to get Hume with a foul call. Oh, it's called number yep, 13. It was on Hume. Fourth on Hume. Yeah, Hume had given up good position to Culver inside, trying to pull Culver out of the way, and got caught with the foul. <laughs> Give it up, it may have been that Derek just took it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Physically imposing Derek Culver, 6'10", 255 pounds. And boy, I'll tell you what, you know, there's so many teams going back to the old hack a shack in the NBA that when the big guy gets a, the ball late in games, you feel comfortable fouling him, putting him at the free throw line. But man, yep. Derek Culver does not fit into that category. Soft touch. Culver oh. is at seven of eight from the free throw line. He is 17 for 18 on the season from the free throw line. The Mountaineer faithful beginning to feel it here for the Mountaineers. West Virginia keeping that pressure on. Making Northern Powell a lot of work to get the ball up the court before it's getting into their set. Sloot's looking. Good job that time by McBride. And Hume, what a difficult shot for Bowie Hume, Hume. lead down to seven, quick timeout for the Bears. Well, with Hume's ability to shoot the ball outside, he's going to be able to drive quite a bit because people are going to close out on him quick, and he's got a good first step. And as you said, that was a tough finish. You know, Bowie Hume, a, a little bit quiet, then hit that big three towards the end of the first half. Now leading the Bears and actually leading all scorers in the game now with 18 points. That's been tested three right at the end of the first half that seemed to give Northern Colorado a little life heading into the yeah, halftime break. Well, you know, and this has been a, a pretty tough trip for Northern Colorado. I mean, they were in Northern Iowa and then sort of just came straight to Morgantown. And uh, yeah, you, but that, that, that's what coaches from schools, you know, or your, your mid-majors and that type of thing. Put them in a situation where they have to go out and play some tough basketball in some tough venues. Yeah, no one's going to Northern Colorado to play That's a exactly road right. game. Right, exactly. Now, they are rewarded with a trip to Cancun <laughs> next week, so that'll be a nice trip for the team. But, yeah, in the midst of a four-game road trip, they had to go on the road to Texas, on the road to Northern Iowa here at West Virginia, so difficult games. But again, that's, you know, you're trying to build up a... That's right. You know, build up a, a resume for yourself. We talked about Jeff Linder again. He's really done a fine, fine job with his Bears program. Took it over when they were under NCAA probation and some sanctions against him. Um, obviously, before he got there, back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for the first time at the Division One level. It'll be interesting to see their progress in the Big Sky Conference and West Virginia just 30 and one half seconds away from improving to 3 and 0 on this young season. Receiving some votes in the top 25 polls, they have the win over Pitt. And then again, a pretty good Hackern team, pretty good Northern mm -hmm. Iowa team, yes. or a, 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 a bigger part Northern Colorado team. So, um, you know, they're they're going to get tested here, the Mountaineers, before Big 12 Conference play. Have been tested. Rebound to Hume. Lead is at eight. Smoots, corner, no good. Batted and out of bounds, knocked out by Radabaugh. Boy, he was just pawing at it, and uh, Haley too big and tapped it. Kept it away from him and finally just sort of batted it out of bounds. Chase Harlow will inbound for the Mountaineers, up eight now. Well, you have to give Northern Colorado a lot of credit, though. They have not quit. Yeah. Now 
dribbling it out, and this will be it. So the Mountaineers, a hard-fought victory over Northern Colorado by the final score of 69-61. Bob Huggins, Jeff Linder having a chat, and boy, what a game for Haley for the Mountaineers. 18 points, 12 rebounds, had a couple of assists, figured into some steals. Just an all-around terrific game for Haley. There's Derek Culver, who comes off the bench late for the Mountaineers. He provides a spark with 13 points and five rebounds. Did all that in just 11 minutes of time. So uh, Culver not starting in the game. There's Sheepway. We talked about him prior to the game. Not the same sort of presence. He had seven rebounds in his 19 minutes. Bob Huggins is 3-0 in the season with his team, and he's with Robbie and Spikowski. Yeah, Rob, uh, Bob, you had a 17-point lead. They tie it with five minutes and change left at 54. You go on a run to end the ball game. What happened in that second half? Well, I think it started in the first half. We just didn't guard. We were given straight line drives, and then we overhelped, and they made threes, and we just didn't do a very good job at a defensive end. You know, Bob, that being said, after they tied the game, you go on a 10 nothing run, you go on the win the ball game in a convincing fashion. What did you like about the way your team responded? Well, I mean, we should. I mean, we're supposed to win the game. So, you know, we... We shouldn't have put ourselves in that situation. What can you tell us about what those timeouts are like in that situation? What's being said? What's it like? Well, you know who you want to throw the ball to. You just don't, you're not sure who you want to pass it. You don't get, figure out how to get the other guys out of the way. Um, there's a lot of things go on. Bob, thanks very much. Yep. There's Bob Huggins. we got Jermaine Haley going to come here. In just a second, big congratulations go out to Jermaine Haley for his ball game tonight. 18 points, 12 rebounds for you tonight, Jermaine. What led to your performance and productivity on the court? Staying aggressive on the glass, listening to coach. We understand that not every night's going to be someone's night, especially our guys that we usually go to. So it's up to us as a team to step up each and every night, and it's got to be somebody different every night. You know, Jermaine, it's been a growth process for you here in a couple of years in a Mountaineer uniform. How much are you learning and becoming a leader here in this program? A lot. Uh, coach makes everything a lot easier for the seniors. And honestly, if you just go out and play hard, good things will happen. So just continue to go out and play hard every night. You know, Jermaine, kind of a tale of two games, maybe even three. When you talk about going up ahead 17, they come back and tie it, and then you finish in convincing fashion to earn the win. How do you describe the ups and downs of this game? Uh, we collectively as a group need to, when we're up 10, need to try to push it to 20. And like I said, that comes with playing hard the whole 40 minutes and not just going out and playing hard till we're up. You know, Jermaine, how do you like just the makeup of this club? You got Oscar and Derek Downlow, guys like yourself, and Emmett, and Jordan at the point. How do you describe the talent that this team has in the run you could possibly make here in 2019 and 2020? I feel like our strength is our numbers, and we might be one of the deepest teams in America, and it's going to take the younger guys a little bit to get going, but I think we're going to be a great team in the, down the stretch, final stretch of the season. Congratulations on a great game. Thanks, Jermaine. Appreciate it. All right. Robin Warren, how about that big game for Jermaine Haley? Puts up 18 points, 12 boards, helping the Mountaineers to a big win. They outscore him 15-7 in the final five-plus minutes here in the second half. And, and Robbie, I loved, and Bake, I loved his response to Robbie's question. You know, hey, listen, <laughs> some guys, it's not always going to be somebody's night. We have to have guys who are capable of stepping forward. You get that camaraderie, that sense of team, which is so important on a deep team where minutes might change from night to night. And uh, Haley, the big night here tonight for the Mountaineers. Well, he was as cool with his answers as he was on the court tonight. You could see the calmness and all the questions that he answered that Robbie fired at him just now. Haley, 18 points and 12 rebounds to lead the Mountaineers to a 69-61 victory. They improved to 3-0 on the season. For Robbie and Spikowski, Warren Baker, our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew, I'm Rob King. Thanks for watching Air Force and TCU up next on AT&T Sportsnet.